We tend to think of textiles primarily by the fibers they're made from, say polyester, silk, cotton, wool, but how much thought do you put into anything beyond that point? Today's video for what's in your clothing, we're going to talk more about metals in your clothing. Because remember, when you talk about what else is in our textiles, we don't have the privilege of an ingredient label to look at to see what else was added to your clothing during the process of producing it, manufacturing it, or distributing it. Metals can find their way into our clothing during the process of manufacturing it, sometimes by processing it when different embellishments and items are added to clothing items, sometimes by the storage of the items, distribution. There are so many elements during the process of producing clothing that metals can find their way into our clothing that it's worth going over each of these so that you can decide if there are areas that you need to avoid based on any sensitivities you may have currently or for other reasons. If you're just looking to avoid different elements in your clothing and trying to find ways to easily detect them, because again, we don't have that privilege of an ingredient label to tell us if there's any metals in our clothing. So we really have to rely on understanding why and when those metals would be introduced and if they would actually have an impact on our skin or our health as a result of it. So when I talk about metals and clothing, probably the most common point of introduction of metals into clothing is during the process of producing textiles. Consider the fact that upwards of well over 80% of leather is actually tanned with the use of chromium. During the process of tanning leather, chromium salts are introduced to actually treat the leather to preserve it. It becomes this bluish color after that point and most leather is in that state when it goes off to manufacturers and that's when it's actually dyed or finished afterwards. Because tanning leather with chromium tends to be much more affordable and relatively quick, it tends to be the preferred method of tanning leather, but studies have confirmed that using or interacting with leather goods even after they're made Chromium salts do get released from leather items and they do interact with our skin and can trigger skin reactions. The alternative to chromium tanned leather is vegetable tanned leather. Different metals can also be introduced to textiles during the process of dyeing textiles. Metals such as cobalt, chromium, nickel, lead, barium, and copper can be introduced into a textile while dyeing it, as well as manganese and iron can be used to bleach textiles. Antimony is a metal that can be introduced to textiles as well and is found in most polyester types of fabrics out there during the process of manufacturing fibers for polyester made of PET. Antimony has been shown in some studies to be released from polyester textiles with the introduction of artificial sweat solutions in laboratory studies. This stands to reason that when we sweat in these clothing, and many of these clothing items are for performance textiles, we might be releasing that antimony onto our skin. Antimony and titanium have also been used for their flame retardant properties in textiles. So even though these metals are introduced into textiles during the process of manufacturing the textile, they can still linger in the textile and be released in the process of wearing clothing, especially when you consider sweating or swimming in these clothing items. So when water is introduced, there is a chance that some of these metals or metal salts could be released from the garment and interact with our skin. There is a study that did demonstrate that nickel, cobalt, and to a lesser extent chromium can be actually be absorbed through our skin. So we need to be aware of all the sources that these metals could be introduced into our lives based on the fact that some of them can have skin reactions that we can see and sometimes other reactions that are systemic as a result of absorption. The other thing to always bear in mind is it's not just our health that we have to worry about. We also have to think about the environment. During the process of laundering garments, some of these metals could be released and actually have an impact on our environment. And in this case, there's a lot more data, a lot more studies that need to be done to understand the impact of those metals on our environment overall. There's a whole other category of metals that's been introduced into our clothing in recent decades, and it's a result of processing textiles for different finishes called nano finishes. Nano finishes are when they take these metals and they make them into their microscopic forms and embed them into textiles for different properties. You might see that titanium and zinc have been added to clothing to make them both UV protective as well as easy cleaning. You might come across upholstery or different clothing items that will claim that this is a lot easier to clean this garment and you might wonder why and there's usually a finish added to it that imparts those properties. 
There's also evidence that silicone and zinc can be added as nanoparticles to clothing items to make them water resistant. Silver, copper, zinc, and titanium have been added to clothing items and textiles to offer them antimicrobial finishes. So when you see different garments that say they're antibacterial or antimicrobial, might sound like a great idea, but always bear in mind, how did that garment achieve that property? There's usually a nanometal that's been introduced into the textile during the process of manufacturing that we need to be aware of because some people that may have sensitivities may not even think about their garments and their interaction with their skin may actually manifest reactions as a result of exposure to those garments. So how do we figure out what's in our textiles? And this is the hardest question to always answer when I do these what's in your clothing videos because as always, we just don't have that ingredient label to tell us what's in our clothing. And yes, I'm a big proponent for adding this label because as a dermatologist, when people come in with rashes, that we know there's a source. I know there's something out there, but we just can't figure out where. A lot of it always boils down to sources. We just don't know what the exposure could be because we just don't even know what's in it. There's a lot of skincare products, for example, and detergents and personal care products we can decipher because they have ingredient labels. But clothing, the actual garments, textiles that are touching your skin, upholstery from your furniture, your bedding textiles, these are the things that come into constant contact with your skin. And we need to really understand what's in them so we can figure out if they could be causing reactions in your skin. With nanoparticles, it's even harder harder because it's very hard for those particles to be even broken down out of clothing to figure out what was in there. But there actually was a study last year in 2022 that took several commercially available garments and actually released from them the different metals that were in there and broke it down by product claim to figure out which metals were in which garments so that we could start to learn a little bit more about what could be in our clothing items. This article is also interesting because it did confirm that certain metals might actually find their way into clothing items not based on the manufacturing process but sometimes during the production or storage of clothing or even potentially from the distribution of clothing. For example, this study actually detected beryllium, mercury, cadmium, and lithium in different clothing items, and those aren't even known to be used for any manufacturing purpose as far as textiles go. So these must have found their way into these textiles during the process of either distribution, storage, or maybe some other aspect of manufacturing that had nothing to do with imparting specific property to the clothing, but found their way in the garment anyway. So let's go through each of these metals that was detected in this study so that we can get a better sense of when those metals were found in garments, what the claims or source of the metal may have been, and what this could mean for your clothing. The first metal was vanadium. This metal could be introduced into textiles while dyeing them black. Certain types of black dye might require this metal during the manufacturing process. Now, why does this matter for your skin or for your health? I could not come across any case reports of this metal being linked to skin reactions, but remember, this metal is not present on our standardized patch testing. It's only available through extended series patch testing when it's actually considered a possible source of a reaction, so we don't routinely test for it. However, in the orthopedic literature are case reports of patients who have had orthopedic implants, such as a total knee arthroplasty, that develop skin reactions at the incision site and over time develop rashes in other parts of their body. Allergy testing or patch testing to the metal present in those orthopedic implants did reveal positive reactions to this particular metal vanadium. Now this is one of those metals that is not found on our standardized patch testing, but if you are anticipating a surgery for an orthopedic implant and you're concerned about the possibility that this reaction might occur, then it is worth talking to an orthopedic surgeon about patch testing for extended metal or talk to your dermatologist or allergist about Next up is chromium. Most dyed textiles will have chromium in them only because chromium salts are used for a variety of different pigments. Chromium is used to produce pigments that are yellow, orange, red, black, and blue. So just about every textile out there has the potential to have some chromium aspects to it based on the fact that it's used during dyeing the textiles. And remember, as I mentioned earlier, that leather goods are tanned with chromium. It doesn't matter what color the leather is, even though I say tanned, a lot of my patients will assume it's a specific type of color of leather, but that's not the case. 
all leather during the process of manufacturing it will go through a tanning process that actually makes it a pale blue color before it's distributed to manufacturers and distributors. We'll further dye and finish the leather into different colors or finishes. The tanning is a process of preserving that leather so that it doesn't rot over time. The only alternative to chromium tan leather is vegetable tan leather. Now studies have confirmed that chromium can be released from different garments and leather goods upon prolonged contact with those sources. And yes, this does have the potential to result in skin sensitization and contact dermatitis. Also remember that chromium can be released by various orthopedic implants and can also be found in tattoo pigments. Chromium is a common contact sensitizer and is found on our standardized patch testing that most dermatologists do perform in their office. If it's something that if you suspect could be a culprit for your skin rashes, it's worthy of talking to your dermatologist about patch testing for this cause. Now, barium was found in various white textiles, but luckily barium is not considered a common contact skin sensitizer and is actually used in various medical studies given its low risk of sensitization. Barium is not routinely tested for on our standardized patch testing panels. Now, lead was found in some white textiles and I did not come across any case reports of lead in clothing leading to skin reactions, but again, it's very rarely even considered a possible trigger. But lead found in cosmetic types of items has a much higher incidence of skin rashes. Lead is not a common skin sensitizer, but it does have its own set of health challenges that come with it if absorbed. Copper was another metal that was found during the process of dyeing textiles in various garments. Now, I did not come across copper as a common trigger for contact sensitivity and not necessarily from textiles either. Copper is not necessarily routinely tested for, and when it is tested for, it unfortunately has a high incidence of false positive results. So when we do test for copper, we would have to exercise caution in interpreting those results as to whether or not they actually are a cause of a patient's skin reaction. Cobalt is another metal that's introduced into clothing items as a result of the textile dyeing process. After nickel, cobalt is considered the second most common cause of metal allergy. There are not a lot of studies or case reports on skin sensitivities as a result of cobalt. Cobalt is on our standardized patch testing that's done in dermatologists and allergists often. Nickel is introduced into clothing items during the textile dyeing process as well. Nickel is considered the most common cause of metal allergy. Now, I didn't come across any specific reports of textile dermatitis caused by nickel. However, it is also very easily tested for through standardized patch testing but it would be really hard to determine if nickel was a part of the dyeing process for the particular garment that you're using, only because it's again, not disclosed as to whether or not it was part of the process. Iron and manganese can be introduced during the bleaching process of textiles. Neither is considered to be a common cause of contact allergy on the skin, although there are some recent reports on iron that suggest it might be more common than we realize. It is something that still needs to be studied. Iron. Iron itself is not routinely tested for, but manganese can be available on extended series patch testing for metals. Another note to make about manganese as far as exposure in textiles is not just during the bleaching process, but there are reports of people who have been exposed as enamelers, people who paint ceramics or enamels that might actually develop reactions to manganese. Remember that clothing items are not just the clothing itself, but but remember that textiles can always include appliques, embroidery, and other elements added into the textile as a part of just the decoration of a textile that's done well after the manufacturing process, and that could serve as another source for exposure to some of these metal items. Titanium can be found for a number of reasons in textiles. It can actually be added for UV protection, an antimicrobial finish, it can impart flame retardancy, but the other two big reasons that titanium could be added to the finish of a textile is that it can decrease the luster or sheen of a textile to give it a more matte-like finish, which might be something that's more desired by the consumer, as well as making textiles less transparent. Now, titanium is not thought to be a frequent cause of contact allergy in the skin, However, it is believed that the allergy testing available for titanium may not be fully adequate. It is not found on our standardized patch testing. It can be found on extended series 
testing for metals, but that being said, it is thought to be increasingly found as a potential cause for sensitization, but because it's so it traditionally has been thought to be the lowest risk, that it's often ignored, that it is worthy of consideration or testing for, should there be a suspicion that there's a reaction possible to this metal. Now, zinc is another metal added to textiles to impart that UV protective finish to some textiles. Remember that this is a low risk for contact sensitization and zinc itself has been used to protect the skin from various reactants interacting with the skin. There was even a study with patients with atopic dermatitis using zinc embedded textiles to see if it reduced the incidence of reactions in their skin. It was a very short scale study, a small study, but it, but it did show for the short term those patients may have benefited from the use. There are cases of zinc contact dermatitis in the dental literature to be aware of. And again, it's, zinc is not routinely tested for on our standardized patch testing, but can be available on extended series metal patch testing. Silver has been increasingly added to textiles that have claims for antimicrobial finishes. It's not thought to be a common sensitizer to the skin as it's even found in various wound care dressings and medications. I did not find any uh, reports of contact dermatitis to silver in textiles or to wound dressings for that matter as well. And it's not found on our standardized patch testing, but could be available on extended series patch testing if needed. Now the metal molybdenum could be added for flame retardancy to various textiles. And even though it's not thought to be a common trigger for contact sensitization, it has been found in the cardiac literature for cardiac stents to be a potential trigger for reactions to various stents that are used. Again, this metal is not routinely tested for in standardized patch testing, but could be available on extended series patch testing. Antimony I mentioned earlier is very commonly found in polyester fabrics during the process of manufacturing the PET fibers, but can also be added to textiles to impart flame retardancy as well. It's not thought to be a common contact sensitizer for the skin, can be tested for an extended series patch testing. But also remember that sometimes you might find this metal in appliques and different embroidery or other items added to clothing where it could serve as a potential source for reactions. And, and lastly, surprisingly, arsenic. Arsenic was found in this study to be found in various cotton textiles, and this is likely based on production. Arsenic is not added to textiles during manufacturing. However, it could be used as an herbicide during the process of producing cotton fibers for manufacturing. So it could be inadvertently entering into the clothing item as a result of that process. Arsenic is not thought to be a common cause of skin sensitivities, but it has its own set of healthcare challenges and toxicities associated with exposure. This metal also is not available in standardized patch testing, but can be available on extended series patch testing. Now that was just metal. That was just metals and textiles during the process of manufacturing textiles alone. There are a variety of other sources for metals in our garments afterwards. For example, there are plenty of garments that are embroidered or actually have different things attached to them that could be another source for metals introduced into the garment. And also remember there are various fabrics that have a metallic sheen to them and it's unclear what gives them that sheen or look that could be a result of various metals that are also added in the fibers to impart that shine or shimmer to the fabric. So there are so many sources possible that if you suspect the possibility of a skin reaction to a metal in your garments, it's worthy of talking to your dermatologist, not only for our standardized patch testing, but sometimes extended series patch testing for metals if suspected.